Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Hello, Ms. Cat Young. Welcome to Center of Light Radio. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry for the technical problems, but I think we're here now in good old Ma Bell. <laughs> uh, I saw a phone booth the other day, and I was quite surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really, really. Oh, my goodness. Well, so, Kat, um, let's dive right into it. How did you get into the field of essential oils? Well, it's interesting. I've been in the healing field along with uh, a very uh, intense career in television. I was one of the first director members to join the Directors Guild in the 70s and certainly one of the first five women to ever get my director's certificate. But while I was working in show business, I really worked my way from the bottom up. So I started as a PA for Dick Clark Productions, and then I worked as a stage manager and an associate director until I finally uh, was handed the baton to direct and produce. But when I was working as a stage manager on the Share series for CBS, one morning our stage manager dropped dead right in front of us about 8 o'clock in the morning. And he was a trim, fit, mid-50s guy. He'd been a former dancer. So he didn't have any of the signs that would look like he would have a heart attack, but he certainly did. And on that very day, I said to myself, wow, you know, women have to work harder in this industry to get ahead. So how am I going to work that hard and do a good job and still retain my health throughout all the demands of time, stress, and energy? And it was then that I started to study various different uh, healing methods and how to really take care of myself. And one of those things was I studied uh, clinical hypnotherapy first, and then it led me into natural healing and naturopathy. But along the way, I learned various different healing techniques from a lot of teachers around the world. And when I wasn't working in television, we would be on hiatus for a few weeks. And so I would take that opportunity to study with a shaman in Hawaii, someone in Africa, go to Japan, India, Sai Baba, things like that. So I learned about all all of these energy healers, and when I became familiar with the essential oils, that really resonated with me, Keith, because I understood vibrational healing, and then as I got to know the essential oils from not only a useful point of view, but also from a scientific point of view, I really felt, well, these are the things that are going to help me sustain my life and my energy, and they did, because when they work on us, they work on the physical level and the vibrational level, and it changes us, body, mind, and soul, simultaneously. Wow. Are you familiar with radionics or said another way, vibrational healing? Are they also not, they changed, they coined it, a new term. It's called vibronics. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Yes. I took a course from a gentleman uh, in, uh, oh gosh, I think it was, it was in the British Virgin Islands about 25 years ago. And he had a machine that was attuned to that too. Uh, yes. So I'm very familiar with that. And this does not, the, the essential oils have within them their own plant-based vibrational energy, and it was actually measured by the Taino Institute in, uh, uh, in the state of Washington in the mid-90s, along with another uh, oil uh, naturopath, uh, Dr. Gary Young, and they devised what the vibrations were of of things that we ingest as well as the healthy products of the plant. The reason I ask that is because when I was in India, I learned the art of vibronics, vibrational healing, or radionics, also said that way. And I see the power I've seen, the powerful benefits and use of dealing with healing through vibration. So let me ask you, Kat, how were essential oils first discovered and used? Where did this all begin? Oh, well, it's, uh, we have to go back 18,000 years into Dordogne, wow. France. That's yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, talk, talk about a walk down memory lane. Uh, the very first 
exhibits of plant-based healing were on the caves in a place called Lascaux. They have now closed the caves because of the outside uh, radiation of the sun and some other just presence of people in there are starting to uh, ruin the paintings. But the paintings were made on the on the cave walls, and they had mostly depictions of animals and in uh, and some warrior uh, stances. But they also had the healing plants, and they found some shards of pottery that can contain some of the healing oils, as they did in King Tut's tomb. So three thousand years ago, the Egyptians used them. Prior to that, the Persians used them. The Chinese have always used uh, essential oils, especially oil of peppermint and chamomile. But King Tut, when they opened his tomb, there were 300 jars filled with essential oils, 300 liters of essential oils of various different shapes and sizes sealed with wax. And after those 3,000 years, the discovery was made in 1925. And after 3,000 years, there were still scents and aromas of these oils because they had been so carefully stored and because they had been extracted and distilled carefully at, with low heat so that they would retain their aroma for a long, long time. Let me ask you this question. This may, um, I, I don't intentionally mean to venture outside of your field, and by no means am I insinuating <laughs> this is out of your field. We're talking about this goes back to 18, give or take, thousand years, right? I have no doubt that a lot of these discoveries of using herbs, essential oils, and the like was through trial and error. Do you believe, do you have any, have you ever done any research to discover that some of this, and we don't have to lean into this field, this is just a glaze right over it, was given to, imparted to us, those people 18,000 years, by extraterrestrials or more so by ascended masters who may have made an appearance to say, you know what, this is a way that you know some some people might have been connected. Maybe some eighteen thousand year ago year old shamans kind of thing. So, do you think this was only done through experimentation, and then they discovered that this works and this doesn't, or do you think there was some information given to us by other beings? I think all of the above. Agreed. I think that at one given time that all of these civilizations around the world had the information about plants and the vibrations and the healing qualities. Now, they didn't have the Internet, so something connected them. Something either landed, visited, showed up, or did something to connect all of these civilizations with the same information. And then I believe that they perfected them according to their needs. We all know that people eat differently around the world, and their, then their needs for sustenance are different based on their geographical location. So I'm sure that then they began to experiment in trial, with trial and error, but I do think that they either divined it or were told it or given the information about how to begin and how to use these oils either internally, externally, and which ones did what. And I think that's the trial and error part that uh, just uh, dev uh, devolved over time, if you will. And certainly um, Hippocrates used essential oils. He believed that they were absolutely pertinent to daily life and, and the maintenance of health on an ongoing basis. But sure, I mean, how else do people in different parts of the world do the same thing at the same time? There has to be some kind of an intervention. Absolutely. So what was the what is the primary uses for these oils? Um, I, I'm, I'm sure this, you know, like the hundred monkey syndrome, this thing probably just took off all on its own all over the world. But what were the primary uses for using such oils? Well, there are about five different categories that we can uh, nail them into or put them into. One is psychoaromatherapy, which involves the brain and the nerves. The other one is therapeutic for qualities that are antiviral, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, immune boosting, and pain relief. Then you get into the aesthetic qualities, which really improve the skin, the hair, the physical beauty, 
and the ergonomic. This helps the environment work a little bit better uh, against pesticides uh, and against chemicals. So we would choose to use essential oils in place of those that would destroy the uh, environment. And then for prevention, uh, we also like to use them for headaches and toothaches and sore muscles, and, uh, and, and then we can use them also at the cause level, which could be spiritual, emotional, or mental. And we begin to change our mind, we begin to change our feelings, we begin to change our emotions by using the aromas that lift us into the different vibrations, if you will, of uh, feeling good versus feeling depressed of feeling happy versus feeling angry. And we can change those around by inhaling a scent that has the vibrational capacity to change us from dark to light, simply because the compounds that we inhale are in fact chemicals. So when the oils are extracted from the plant, or they are distilled from the blossoms or the stems and the leaves, they are reduced down to the most potent chemical compound of that plant essence essence that exists. And when we inhale that, it goes into our olfactory system and it crosses the brain tissue or the blood tissue membrane in the olfactory nerves and goes right into the limbic system, which we call the smell brain. And in the limbic system is where we store our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and our memories. So when you change a scent, you can change the entire chemical construction of the limbic system for that moment and your emotions and your mind and your thinking will respond. And I like to demonstrate that by saying if you are on a phone call with someone and you have a fight with them and you're really angry, but you have to go out to dinner with them in another hour and you're, you're still mad at them. So what you want to do is a couple of things. You want to put something like rose in your diffuser to open your heart. You want to put something calming, uh, uh, too, also like a bergamot or a lavender. And you want to inhale those and and diffuse those and calm yourself down. And then what I also like to do is I take little cotton balls and I dip them in those elevating, those mood elevating essential oils, and I take it in a plastic bag. So if during the dinner I get mad at my friend again, I'll just excuse myself, go to the ladies room, have a couple of (laughs) sniffs off my cotton balls, and then come back like nothing ever happened. Hi there, good to see you. But it's true, it's true. And so you have, with essential oils, the reason that they are such good friends of mine is that you can change your mood anytime you want to. You can not have to live with the anger. You don't have to live with the anxiety that you were mentioning earlier. You don't have to live with those. You can shift your mood by simply shifting your memory in the spot of sense, sense memory in your limbic system in your brain. So when you have that kind of power, why wouldn't you use these? Why wouldn't you choose to be happy? And why wouldn't you just have a little helper that is a natural product? Why wouldn't you do that rather than take some kind of a pill or a pharmacological solution that will stay in your body for the rest of your life? You know, Kat, I've heard many times in my life, my spiritual life, that the sense of smell is the most powerful of all of our senses. Well, it is, and it, and it is not just for us, but it's for a lot of animals, too. The animal kingdom true, true. Uh, protects itself with its sense of smell, and and we can, too. We certainly smell fires. We certainly, uh, you know, we, we smell a lot of those things. And, and even Helen Keller said that smell is the most important sense we have because it can transport us through all of the portals and journeys of our lives yes. in the past present and the future and well, in yeah. fact that's how i heard about the sense of smell being the strongest because you know we can just be going throughout our day and we'll smell something and it will launch us back to a childhood memory faster than anything possible 
Yes, exactly. And I don't know if you're familiar with Proust's writing, but he wrote an entire story based on the fact that he was dipping one of the French cookies, the Madeleines, into a tea, and it transported him back through his lifetime, and that is how he wrote his novel, because he wrote it from that memory coming forward. But again, it was triggered by a smell. Mm, mm, mm. Check from the... um chat room we have don danny wants to ask a question he says how do you feel about the you the using of essential oil of hemp well i think anything is good if you want to use it i, I know that um that the hemp oil is really helpful with arthritis some people want to use it with the uh, with the high chemicals i always want to call it tcp but i think there's something else <laughs> i think the the uh the lettering is different, but they want to use it with THC? a different THC. Thank you. Yeah. They want to use it with a different level, and and there are products out there that you can find. The um, cannabis flower oil is one of the oils that I write about in my book. And by the way, if anybody wants to really learn about this, it's called the healing art of essential oils, and it's how you really heal from the inside using essential oils. And one of the uh, one of my choice. Uh, master palette uh, essential oils is, is cannabis flower. It's it's hard to get, but it's extraordinary and it certainly is useful. So I hope that answers his question. Absolutely. So walk me through or give me some idea how essential oils are made. And well, there work? are four ways. In fact, I love I love one of the stories. The person who invented the most common way to extract an oil uh, was, uh, her name was Cleopatra the Alchemist, and she lived in about uh, 1200 B.C., not Cleopatra the, the one that's famous, Cleopatra of the Nile. <laughs> Uh, although she used essential oils, and I'll tell you that story, too. Anyway, Cleopatra invented the the Alembic still, which is kind of a still like we see in the movies. People make moonshine with these Alembic stills. And uh, the water boils, the steam hits the plant product, the buds, the seeds, the stems, the leaves, and it it, it causes the the compounds to separate and what you're left with is the oil after all of the other matter is reduced. So she invented that and then Avicenna in Persia took that her Olympic still experimentation to the next level and those people really had a factory there until just a hundred years ago they were manufacturing oils in the in the way that uh, Cleopatra the alchemist did. Now Cleopatra the one that we're uh, familiar with, Cleopatra the Seventh, she used to dunk her sails in essential oils and her clothing and her linen so that she could actually be perceived by scent sailing down the Nile. So if she's going out to meet one of her Roman boyfriends up or, up or down the Nile, whichever direction she was going, she would smell up the whole place. So the people on the shores would go, oh, boy, there's Cleo going on another date. Oh, boy. That's funny you and say that because I've been wearing patchouli oil for so long. I can't wear cologne. It doesn't feel like my vibration. It doesn't feel like it belongs in my body. But for about 12, uh, 10, 12 years now, I've been wearing patchouli oil. And now that I'm so used to the smell, I really don't smell it because it's such a stout oil. You really need, at most, at most, about a dime size. And I don't smell it anymore, so I put it on, and I can be playing music in a club that is a very large club. And <laughs> people will say, well, Keith Blanchard's here, and they say, how do you know? And you say, I can smell him. <laughs> I can smell him. Well, it, yeah, you know, that's really that's really fun, isn't it, that you are known by your smell as well? So in a good ask, way. What are, what are the benefits of patchouli oil for me? What are, what are some of the benefits that patchouli oil would provide in uh, an essential oil uh, application? Well, you know, I have all of that in my book. If you if you turn to, I think patchouli is in my uh, second layer. You'll find everything you need to know about it there, and it'll tell you the properties. It'll tell you the benefits. It'll tell you how to use them. It'll tell you why it's important. Um, you know, patchouli is one, patchouli and sandalwood are some of the very very old uh, ancient scents yeah. that have been used even by the Vedas and. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, and what I wanted to also tell you, you said, you know, you use about a dime size. It's very, very important that with all these essential oils, that we keep safety in mind. And there's so many people out there selling them that uh, it scares me that people have been harmed. And when I give my talks, I ask people, have anybody, I want you to tell me, you know, your, your worst stories about essential oils. And I've heard things from burns to, you know, to, to death in some instances. A woman covered her baby in an essential oil with no dilution and killed it. So, uh, you know, it, these are very, very powerful compounds. And what you need to learn about when you purchase your essential oils, which please buy organic. Do not buy anything that is not organic because as the plant matter, seeds, buds, leaves, stems, bark, uh, as they are distilled down into their very, very intense and potent content, so are any uh, elements that were toxic or pesticidal. All of those are also distilled down and made stronger. So, so you can, don't want to Let me ask you this. Since, we're, uh, since you're telling us this, can you provide us here with an address, someplace that we could buy this stuff in organic form? Because... We know consumerism today, how things are out there. Everybody's putting the word organic on it, and it has nothing to do with organic whatsoever. So how do we know where to go to get said organic um, quality? All right, there are two answers. I mean, one, my book lays out for you all the things you know to, need to know about buying essential oils because and, and the safety, which I'm going to recap for you as well. The second thing is go to my website and I have a resources page. And on my resources page, I list five different companies that you can buy from, that I buy from, that I think are reputable. And what's important about the company is that they source their material from farmers that are sustainable, that use no insecticides or pesticides or toxins, that they are uh, extracted and distilled if they're done that on the spot, that it's done according to the least amount of heat possible, then that they are packaged and shipped uh, in a correct way so they're not just shoved onto a boat somewhere that's 200 degrees in its hold, but they are shipped with care and that they are delivered and also and then rebottled with care. And the only reason nobody has the time to go follow that for every oil they're going to buy. So trust your distributor and, and use a distributor or a manufacturer, one that is going to deliver you the best and top quality product and stands by their guarantee because they want to give you the best quality as well. So uh, you, my website is healingartofessentialoils.com healingartofessentialoils.com and go to the resources page and I have dilution charts for you. I have safety information. I have links to other organizations that will give you the information you know and I have the list of where to buy them and which companies uh, I like to buy and uh, you know I can just tell your audience here two companies off the top of my head. One is organicinfusions.com Com, and they're out of Camarillo, California. That's Organic Infusions. And the other one is Mountain Rose Herbs. And these are two companies that are terrific. But I do have more listed for you. so you can. Do you on your website have information about diffusers? Absolutely. And there are, you know, there's lots of different types of diffusers out there. I wouldn't, for safety's sake, I wouldn't use one of those little small things where you burn a candle under it and then the oil just kind of burns out. I wouldn't do that because you can't control the temperature and you're creating toxins if you raise the smoke point on your essential oils to a point where they become rancid and you don't want free radicals in the air. So, um, but diffusers are great and and, and I don't list those, I don't sell those, but you can find them, I mean, they're pretty uh, harmless, you know, they're pretty innocuous, you can buy whichever one you like, some of them will accept a carrier oil in, in your dilution of your essential oil, and some will not, so you have to keep them clean, number one, change them frequently, and use them. Well, I just have a couple little ones that I like. They were about $30 each, and they're 
you know, they're, they're perfect. They mix with water, and, and I'm happy about that. How many different essential oils are there? <laughs> many, oh, many, I think, one uh, many. Well, I'm familiar with about 325, but I think that there's 400 out there. There's, they, keep, they keep growing. As, as they become popular, they keep growing. But with, with the safety and the caution, I want to go back for just a second um, because I, I don't want your audience to go out there and just buy essential oils, shake them up, and then start daubing it behind your ears. They are potent. So you have to be diluted with carrier oils. And the carrier oils are also not things you buy in a grocery store that says sweet almond oil or something. They, you must also buy those from the uh, distributors that have uh, a lot of integrity. And you can use a jojoba oil. You can use a, a walnut oil. You can use an apricot kernel oil. You can use any kind of oil that has the viscosity that you enjoy. There's also um, high-grade olive oil, safflower, sunflower oil. But again, not the ones that you get at your grocery store, the ones that are manufactured for dilution of essential oils. And store them in the refrigerator because when we leave things out in the light or we leave things out in the heat, they can go rancid and toxic too. So just keep all of your carrier oils in the refrigerator and, and your essential oils too. If you keep them down uh, really co cooler, they're going to last longer for you and serve you better. Kat, if they were three oils, just three that someone could pick, what would you recommend those be? Well, I would start absolutely with lavender because it has antibiotics. I somehow knew that was going to be part of the equation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it would be lavender, and then it, it's a toss-up. Uh, next, I would take either a tea tree oil or a eucalyptus. Uh, I would have one of those, and then I would probably go with a lemon and then I also like a good smelling one like a Ylang Ylang um, or something that has got a lot of uh, perfumey and floral uh, things. So are you but insinuating lemon, that these should be a mixture? Because, uh, no kidding, I thought lavender and I thought lemon. I didn't think about the, the, the last one you said. But I have had many of my friends. Um, actually, they make a mixture of lavender, uh, lemon, and something else, and they use it as a spritzer around their house. And when they use it, I can feel it. I can feel the upliftment that occurs. Uh, did you mean, mean this individually or combining them or both? All of the above. Um, yeah, the, the you can certainly combine them. And when you, you know, again, I go back to my book because the healing art of essential oils tells you all about the properties. And I selected the top three if I had to. I mean, really, for me, it's the top 12. But the top three give you the antibacterial, the, uh, the calmative, the nervine, the disinfecting, the um, antiseptic qualities, and also some of the antibacterial and cleaning qualities that lemon gives you. And, and those you can use in combination or you can use them uh, singly. I mean, lemon is a great household uh, essential oil because you can use it in the bathroom, of course. You can neutralize pet odors with it. You can refresh carpets by sprinkling a few drops of it into baking soda and putting the baking soda on your carpet. You can get rid of pet odors that way. And then, of course, you wait 15 minutes to vacuum it up. Um, peppermint is also great because you can use it as a, a spider and yes, an ant very much roach so. chaser. Yeah, and and again, you want to be back to safety and careful where you put these things because you don't want pets or children to get into them. And if you do buy essential oils and you have them, put them in a lockbox because you know they they, uh, they need to be cared for so that people can't get into them and and use them incorrectly because. Terrible things have happened. You can be oversensitized to it, which means that every time you got around, if you were oversensitized to lemon, every time you get around something that has lemon essence in it, you will have an allergic reaction. Now, imagine there's lemon everywhere. You, you, you couldn't do the dishes without having a reaction. So be careful. Dilute them and treat them like they are what they are, potent chemical compounds. When I was asking you about using these um, individually, 
or in a combination. And one of the first things you said was there was antibacterial properties as well as some calming properties. So this would be, can be used for the prevention of disease and illness because one, because of the antibacterial properties, but also what may, most people might overlook is the fact that it's calming. So there's a calming effect, re alleviating stress. We know that stress causes a dis ease. So now it really starts to make sense to me. Uh, so this can be used as a preventative, yes? Versus yes, after the can. fact. Yes, it can. It, it, and, and that is so smart, Keith, because that's where, that's where they really are my pals. If I know I'm going into a stressful weekend of teaching or I have a stressful client, I'm going to make sure that I've got like two oils on hand that I can uh, sniff. And I have this little pendant thing with a piece of felt in it. So I'll put a little do dollop of lavender on there to just make sure that I'm calm. And, I, and I'll make sure that I have some peppermint on that as well so that I can uh, regenerate my energy if I start to get tired. So I use them um, before, before and after, if you will, uh, of any kind of uh, something that's going to strain me. And what I've learned is that I just don't wait for the physical message to tell me that I'm overtired or that I have done too much or something. I will help prevent that by using essential oils, and I use them as my guideline. So I travel with little teeny vials of uh, the essential oil, usually ones that I've diluted, so I don't have to mess with that on the road. But I've got, you know, a little pack of about 10 of them that I take with me so I can change the smell of a hotel room if I want to. I ha carry a little tiny battery-operated diffuser so that if somebody's been smoking or doing something in the room that isn't uh, to my taste, then I can change that aroma. I can also put myself to sleep with, with a bit, little bit of lavender and perhaps a little bergamot. But I, 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 I don't know what I would do if I ran out of my essential oils, frankly. I'd have, I'd have to go up into the hills and start picking things and distill them like Cleopatra the alchemist. Jack, let me ask you this. We, we know how, or at least we have heard, how powerful lavender is for those who can't sleep. There's many people out there with insomnia. People are just having a hell of a time falling asleep. Is there a combination of two or three or how much lavender? What would be your advice about using essential oils for those who just can't seem to go into La La Land? Well, um, two things. First of all, I want everybody to become familiar with essential oils themselves. And so I would suggest that they uh, buy my book and start to read about them and find out about the properties. So that's number one. And that's not just a sales pitch about my book. That's because I want everyone to have the education <laughs> about them as they use them, okay? Um, these days, uh, p uh, authors don't make too much money, so I'm not getting rich off the book. What I am is trying to do my mission, and that is educate people on essential oils before they use them. All right, answering your question, I, here's what you do when you become familiar with an essential oil. Pretend that it's a friend, and you're sitting across the table, and you're having a cup of coffee or an iced tea or something with them, and you're getting to know them. So you want to know where they've come from, what they do, what they think about. Once you have grasped that in your mind and in your heart, you're now ready to use the essential oil for your benefit. You know a little bit about them. So I would diffuse lavender oil and I would, first of all, I would um, dilute it or diffuse it with some water, which will self-dilute it. But I would try that one night and I would see how I feel the next morning. And I would take a few moments to have a connection with it. I would meditate. I would do some deep breathing, and I would really help the, the essential oil come into my world and help me. I would invite it in, if you will, uh, with generosity and a good spirit. And also you want to think about what do I do prior to me going to bed? Why am I so stirred up? Why can't I get to sleep? Are you drinking too much? For example, alcohol is one of the big problems to keep people awake. So stop drinking like at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So you can't finish off that last 
beer at 9.30 and expect to be fast asleep at 11 o'clock. That's not how the body works. Uh, You also want to have your last meal not at 9.15 so that you're trying to go to sleep at 10.30, You want to look into the body's rhythms as well and honor those rhythms. They're very different than what our society has as habits. So you have to look at habits versus the rhythms and pay attention to that as well. And the more you help your body achieve rest and sleep, the better you're going to feel the next day and the higher the level of your performance. Can essential oils be used on our fur children, pets? No, no. Um, it's just too strong because of the, the fact that they are, their sense of smell is too strong. Is that one reason? Or is That's that the one, reason? It, well, there are several reasons. One, unless you're dealing with a horse, they're pretty much littler than we are. So we don't know how their bodies are going to respond. Animals have allergies too. So for example, if, uh, if, if you or I or our cat or dog is allergic to ragweed, we shouldn't have chamomile anywhere near them because it's from the ragweed family. So, and, and if you want to put them on the pets, you don't know how they're going to respond. You know, they're, they're little teeny beings. It's like the lady who covered her child in, in, uh, in essential oil and the child couldn't handle it. The body shut down and the child died. She thought she was doing the best for the child, but she was not. Is it possible not. that the child just suffocated because of the, the fragrance? It was, it was just so overwhelming, it, it fumigated the kid? Or was it just a reaction to the entire body and the body just shut down? I think it was all of that, Keith, plus vibration. I think that the vibrations yeah, totally, absolutely. Of, the, of the essential oils were so powerful that it just, it, it, you know, it was like sending electric shocks through the kid, if you will. And she was just trying to calm its fever, but she used a powerful oil and didn't dilute it, took it right out of the bottle, and it was just too much. You know, the kid was just over, well, kind of like sticking your your finger in a socket and having all that electricity go through you. Um, so anyway, back to animals. Yeah, yeah, the, there are certified and well-certified aromatherapists who deal with animals, and there's one on the East Coast that is wonderful. Her name is Kelly Holland Azaro, and she has a website, and she has guidance, um, but you wouldn't want to try something on somebody that you really weren't sure about it. So that's why reading my book familiarizes you with the power of these essential oils. And then you don't want to, you know, put an animal through it. You know, what if you hurt them? And many people have. I will diffuse lavender or I will diffuse a, a, a comative that I find that I choose for, you know, my cats and dogs. I'll diffuse it for one or two minutes, but I make sure that it's in an open room and that I'm right there. And, I, you know, if the phone rings, I don't answer it because I want to make sure that they're not exposed for three, four, or five minutes. Same thing with little children. You don't want to put anybody under five in a room with a diffuser uh, for more than one or two minutes. So you have to supervise this. It can help them. It can break up their congestion. If you're using eucalyptus and tea tree or oregano or thyme, it can, it can break up their congestion. But you don't know what harm it could do as well. You know, we're talking atoms and molecules that are being inhaled into the system, and we have to be careful of the intensity. Where can they find your book? And if you would, again, please uh, give them a little more, uh, get the, repeat the information about where they can find those two companies that you referred them to for um, beginning their experience with using essential oils and diffusers. Okay, happy to do that. Um, the book is not expensive if you order it from uh, Target or Google Play. You could also order it as a download. I think the book is under $15. Um, type in, what I would suggest is go to Google and type in The Healing Art of Essential Oils and look at the selection they'll give you. You can buy it from a whole bunch of different vendors. Uh, Target is one, Barnes & Noble is another, uh, Amazon, of course, and then you'll just pay shipping on that. But the download, I think, is maybe 
nine ninety five, something like that. They they change the prices, so I never know. Um, but the the book at, in a bookstore would retail for twenty one ninety nine. It's four hundred pages, so it's a really really good buy. The second thing you can do is go to my website where I am constantly updating articles and the information of retail sales and other free links and resources for you. And that is just plain old healingartofessentialoils.com, healingartofessentialoils.com. Com. And I'll have listed there for you the companies that I have purchased from. Now, there are probably more companies out there, too. I must say, I haven't uh, connected with all of them that are out there that may be absolutely terrific. But you want to make sure that they sell organic, wild-crafted, or that if, and if you buy in Europe, which I do too, you want to make sure that they have the EU logo on them, which is the European version of organic. And it, uh, it's a little uh, leaf, in the, it's a little square green thing with a leaf outlined in white dots. That is the EU logo. And over here, ignore the words that say therapeutic, natural, pure, top grade. That's all Wall Street. That's all marketing. You need to see the words certified, organic, or wildcrafted. And that's what you should buy. You're putting these very, very potent compounds into and onto your precious body. So please have respect for them. And what I tell people who say, oh, my gosh, but they're more expensive, and I say, right, they are, and that's okay, just buy less. Just, you know, read the book, hone down to what you really want to have in your cabinet, and or, you know, send me an email, ask me questions. I'm always available, and, and choose those. But definitely Treat your body well, because that's how it will treat you back. Cacme, at the top of the hour, would you give us um, a final thought? I will. I would say that essential oils heal us on the mental, the physical, and the spiritual level. And that when we incorporate them into our lives, we have best friends that we can do our journey with. And our path becomes easier, much more natural, and we don't harm the environment. They are the best friends that we can possibly ever have when it comes to our own health. What's coming down the pike for you, dear? Well, I've got another book coming out this of course uh, you do. <laughs> you know, August. And it's based on my dog Tallulah. It's called the supposedly Enlightened Person's Guide to Raising a Dog. And of course that's tongue in cheek because she taught me everything I know. <laughs> and then some so I've got that and I'm, you know, always out promoting my books, teaching classes, holding workshops, just spreading the information so that people can have the best life possible. Cac, thank you for being a very informative guest here at Center of Light Radio. You can bet when I get back tonight from my music show, uh, I'm going to listen to this interview from an audience point of view. That way I can get the host thing out the way and really absorb what you're saying because I have been really interested in this field and uh, you supply me with a lot of information. Thank you greatly. You're always welcome back here. Well, thank you, Keith. I'm, I'm a fan of yours. I think you do a great service to uh, mankind, and I love your radio show. So I'm honored to be on it. Thank you, and thank you to your producer. Uh, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Please have me back anytime. Everyone, Cat Young, what a phenomenal, empowering guest for me, that's for sure. Uh, I'm really thinking about moving into the field of essential oils. I want to know more about it. Um, I like the fact that it's good for spiders. I, I'm just not a spider kind of guy. And I don't know many people who are spider uh, tolerable, let's put it that way. Center of Light Radio every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find me sitting here in this chair. I want to say a big shout-out to my producer, Joe. That This guy, he works. He puts in a lot of time to making sure all the technology is as good as it could be, and to the level of functionality that it should operate. And thank you, Joe, for that. Uh, next week, we're going to try to m get this technology under control, to use the word, a little, a little greater, a little better. And so we can incorporate more of the video aspect and all the cool little bells and whistles, which makes uh, such things fun. Uh, Monday nights, my name is Keith Anthony Blanche. I look forward to seeing you. Always remember to ease into bliss. Peace out. Have a beautiful evening.
inside